Funny how quiet a day can be with nothing going on and nothing about to either from the looks of things. And then, without any warning at all, you're plunged right in the middle of the biggest adventure of your life. That's the way it was with Dalton Lee Deardorff, who is 12 years old and lives near Minot, North Dakota. There he was, just riding along on his bike, when all of a sudden... Hey, Dolph, come here! Now, what's he up to at this display in front of the Chevrolet dealership? Hey, Dolph, look at this racer. Yeah, sure looks like fun. strong car. Bring one of your parents and sign up now for the 1963 Soapbox Derby, the greatest amateur racing event in the world. You build your own derby racer like this one, race it in the local derby, and if you win, you get to compete in the famous All-American Soapbox Derby in Akron next August. Yes, Dalton, the next All-American champion could be you. It could be any boy like you between the ages of 11 and 15 years with the courage and determination to try. Ordeen Junior High School in Duluth, Minnesota. Classes are out for the day and the boys and girls are starting home. Among them is a boy we'll be watching from now on. His name is Harold Willis Conrad. But most people call him Bo. He's 12 years old, a seventh grader. Hey, Bo, we need a picture tonight. How about you? No, not tonight. I've got to get home. I've got work to do. Gosh, you've said that every night. What are you working on that's so important? Oh, something. OK, see ya. Yeah. Bo Conrad one of the best pitchers on his little league team. Plays trombone in the school band. Good student, too. An all-round boy. This is the river where he often goes fishing, though, of course, he hasn't time to go fishing now. He likes to swim, too. And in the winter, when the ponds freeze up, he likes to skate and play hockey. He's a good hockey player, just like his father. Bo's father passed away two years ago. His father was an accountant, but he was good with tools, too. He built this handsome house with his own hands. It's the best-looking one in the block. Hi, Mom. Dad. Bo, well, how about a glass of milk with that? No, not now. I've got time. Down here in the basement workshop where his father used to work, Using the tools he used to use, Bo feels very close to his father. Here he labors over that certain something that now occupies his every spare moment. The soapbox derby racer, which he hopes will win him one of the valuable college scholarships he will need to help him finish his education. There are lots of big prizes. And Bo never forgets what his father used to tell him. Whatever else you do, son, get an education. 
A man just doesn't have much of a chance these days without one. Bo built a racer once before. It wasn't much of a success. He got beat in the first heat. That's his father. And that's his father's hockey medal. Bo hung it up over the workbench just for luck. Back in Minot, Dalton Deerdorf is making some progress, too. At the Johnson Chevrolet dealership, which co-sponsors the Soapbox Derby there, Mr. Deerdorf signs Dalton up as an entrant. And Dalton goes on his way, the proud possessor of his Soapbox Derby kit. The kit contains the official Derby wheels and axles he will need to build his racer. He reads the instructions carefully, memorizing the rules he must follow. Then, Dalton designs his racing car by studying pictures of winning racers from years past. Full weight, minimum cross-section, maximum car and wheelbase length, best streamlining. There are the factors that make a winning car. I think that will cover general construction fairly well. In special soapbox derby clinics all over the country, future champions are learning the fine points of building a racer. As each boy learns for himself, any boy can build a racer. All he has to do is want to, badly enough. There are many ways of building the body shell. Dalton makes his of plywood. Some other boys make theirs of fiberglass, which they mold over forms made of wire screen. Bo also uses plywood for the sides. Bo breaks a lot of fine old traditions in building his racer. For one thing, he uses plenty of nails in some places instead of screws. Bo's method of keeping track of the weight so that he doesn't go over the limit is nothing short of ingenious. With his racer straddled over two barrels, he crouches beneath it on his bathroom scale and manages to lift it just long enough to get a reading. 210 pounds, allowing 30 pounds for the wheels, which are yet to be installed, that's a total of 240 pounds. Okay now, but it's getting pretty close to that 250 pound limit. With varying grades of sandpaper, Dalton polishes the plywood shell to a smooth surface before painting. Alaska to Florida, Hawaii to Maine, and in Canada, Okinawa, the Philippines, West Germany, and Venezuela, in 239 cities, 
Derby Day is the day when each community stages its own local races to decide the lucky boy who will go on to Akron and represent his hometown in the All-American. Hundreds of hours of effort by countless derby workers go into these local derbies to make each one an event the boys and their parents will never forget. And when Derby Day is over, the 239 local champions, which includes Dalton Deerdorf in Minot and Bo Conrad in Duluth, now head for Akron and the famous All-American. Akron, Ohio. No other city in the world is more ready and willing to stand itself on its ear for a bunch of boys that it likes than Akron for the Soapbox Derby. No king, prince, or prime minister ever got a wilder, more enthusiastic welcome than a derby champ in Akron. This is the day when the kids are kings and the grown-ups stand and cheer. After their tumultuous welcome to Akron, the champs are guests at Derby Town, one of the finest boys' camps in America. Four unforgettable days, packed from dawn till bedtime with every kind of fun, game, and sport. Television's lawman, John Russell, is there to give autographs. So is singing star Paul Anka, screen star Rock Hudson, and comedian Paul Lynn. All in all, everyone has a wonderful time. Pre-race days at Derby Downs are filled with activity. A thousand and one things to get done, and very little time left to do it in. New wheels issued for the race have to be broken in. Last-minute repairs and adjustments have to be made. Finishes that already gleam like that on a piano have to be gone over yet again with wax and polish cloth. 239 cars, each one the pride and joy of the boy who built it, must be weighed and inspected. Every champion since the first soapbox derby in 1934 has gone on to outstanding success in his later life. Maurice Bale, 1935, now an engineer with General Motors at Muncie, Indiana. Herbert Munch, 1936, owner of his own business in Hood River, Oregon. On and on the list goes. Yes, there's something about these soapbox derby boys. You might even say, once a winner, always a winner. Bo would like to be one of them, but as he looks over the competition, his hopes dim. Just look at all those cars. It really shakes you up to see how beautifully built most of them are. To Bo, every one of those other cars seems to look better than his. With inspection behind them, each boy gets a trial run down the green top track that has led so many others to fame and fortune. Friday night, there's a big gathering around the campfire at Derby Town with a nice gift for every boy, a watch, to remind him of the hours he spent at Derby Town. Tomorrow is the day of the big race, and who can sleep tonight? Whatever else you do, son, get an education. A man just doesn't have much of a chance these days without one. And suddenly, it's Derby Day. Beneath alternating gray and blue skies, 
Derby Downs is a sea of color. The stands packed with excited fans and anxious moms and pops, while 3,500 marchers make the Derby Day Parade an eye-filling spectacle. Masses, you both in the stands, far off the track there, you'll want to give a hand to the 1963 champion, 239 so hot derby champion from the United States, Canada, Venezuela, West Germany, Hawaii, Okinawa, and the Philippines, each carries his own champion flag. The track because they will. The grown-ups, Arthur Godfrey, John Russell, and Paul Anka get things off to a flying start with a traditional oil can derby. It's down. Here they come. Lane one, John Russell. Lane two, Arthur Godfrey. Lane three, Paul Anka. Arthur Godfrey has a strike lead. Coming across the front line. Wow! That's a close one. The judges say in lane one, John Russell, the winner. And now to the serious business of the day, as three at a time, the 239 contestants in the 1963 Soapbox Derby go flying down the long incline. 975 feet from top to bottom, less than 30 seconds to run it. 30 seconds that can seem like a lifetime. In wave after wave, the cars go whizzing down the hill. As soon as the track can be cleared, three more go down. How many more heats can go down? Four more. Yeah, well, you better watch it, because at the bottom of the hill is a pretty tricky win. OK, thanks a lot. Yeah, good luck. 28.20. Even a downpour of rain fails to dampen the spirits of the fans and only briefly delays the race. A two-car heat coming up, heat 80, and lane one will be Dalton Deirdre of Minot, South Dakota. In lane three, Corwin Haberman of Baldwin, Missouri, and here they come. And now, Dalton, this is it. The next 30 seconds heat will tell the tale. Two-car heat at the halfway point. Minot, South Dakota, Dalton Deirdre appears in the lead. Now the lead changes hands, coming into the stretch in lane three, Corwin Haberman, Baldwin, Missouri. And he's gaining on lane one as he crosses the finish line. The winner, Corwin Haberman from Baldwin, Missouri. And the time is 28.91, 28.91. Dalton now joins the other champs in the rooting section to cheer the new winners. And the race goes on. That's the setup for heat number 116. The green flag is up. It's down, and here they come. Lane one, Hollis Inman of Tampa. Lane two, Harold Conrad of Duluth. And lane three, David Mark of Toledo. Three speedy little cars coming right down the track here, burning it up. Lane two, Duluth, Minnesota, taking the lead. Lane three, Toledo, Ohio. Closing in there, in the stretch. In lane two, the winner, Harold Conrad of Duluth, Minnesota. And the time, 28.30. Now it's the semi-finals. Three top cars. Each one has beaten all comers. And here they come. Heat number 124. Getting closer to the line all the time now. These boys streak down at the halfway mark in lane three, El Dorado, Arkansas. In lane two, coming ahead now is Harold Conrad from Duluth, Minnesota. Lane two seems to be in the lead coming into the stretch. The winner, Harold Conrad of Duluth, Minnesota in lane two. And the official time is 27.75. And now the top three cars out of the entire field of 239 are taken back up to the top of the hill for the final heat. The crowd watches with tense excitement, for in the next few seconds, one of these boys, one alone, will be judged the grand winner, the All-American Champion for 1963. Who will it be?
Bob Fleury, Decatur, John Gaylor, Columbus, or Bo Conrad, Duluth, each with the world championship hanging in the balance. The cars are on the line, the flag is up, and we're about to have the finals of the 2630. Here it comes, the flag is down, the boys are off and winning. At the 100 foot mark, of course, they're still hooked together. It's closely following down. Two black cars in the white one. Here's Cal Conrad of the North in the center lane. Bob Curry and the Keener Carter in the left lane. And John Galloway and Columbus Gordon in the right. They're still hooked together at the 600 foot mark. Now, there's the center hooked foot mark. And it's going to be a tight one taken on the pull up. And he's looking. Here comes the flag of the Keener Carter. Here comes the flag of the Keener Carter. Here comes the flag of the Keener Carter. Yes, it's Bo Conrad, winner of the biggest and certainly one of the hardest fought derbies in 26 years of derby history. Mr. S. E. Knudsen, vice president of General Motors and general manager of Chevrolet, presents the winner's trophy, just the first of many awards that Bo will receive. Harold, congratulations on winning this great race. You have a great car and you did an outstanding job of driving. On behalf of the Chevrolet Motor Division, I'm delighted to present you with this championship trophy. Good luck again and congratulations. Thank you very much. For Bo Conrad, this is only the beginning of the honors heaped upon him. Now the champs march into the banquet of champions the grand culmination of a tremendous week. 2,000 people are here to cheer the new champions, proud parents, and hundreds of tireless derby workers who have labored long and hard to make the derby the world-famous event that it is. The champs hear many speakers tonight, including a specially taped message from the President of the United States. Your achievements are an inspiration to all the youth of America. Best wishes and congratulations to each of you. And now... Mr. Larry H. Averill, General Sales Manager, will enter the results of today's race into the pages of the All-American Soapbox Derby History Book. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my privilege and pleasure to record into the Hall of Fame of Youth. college scholarship and the champs ring to the new champ. Harold, it's a real thrill and pleasure to present this scholarship to you. You're a wonderful champ. In addition, here is the champ. Mr. Averill ring. presents the first place trophy to the new All-American Soapbox Derby champion, Harold W. Conrad of Duluth, Minnesota. Congratulations, Harold Conrad. And when he returns home to Duluth, well, probably no 12-year-old boy in the whole history of Duluth ever had such a welcome. Welcome home, Bo Conrad, 1963 Soapbox Champ. Bo's education is now assured and he has gained something that can never be taken from him, the knowledge of what it's like to reach the very top. As for Dalton, he too is a winner. He's a winner in those qualities of character which will give him an advantage all through life.
Though he's only 12 years old, already he's somebody special. He has done something that just every boy hasn't. Well, if he sits a little straighter, walks a little taller, holds his head a little higher, that's because he is, and always will be, a champion.